Ad Salem is a former Egyptian army officer and the government's star witness against Egyptian cleric Dr. Omar Abd Rahman, who the FBI says was the ringleader in the bombing plot. Salem was paid an estimated $1.5 million to infiltrate and inform on Rahman and his followers. He was recruited shortly after the 1991 assassination of right-wing rabbi Meir Kahana. As an associate of Rahman, Salem traveled in the cleric's inner circle, where he surreptitiously recorded conversations with Rahman. But unknown to his FBI handlers at the time, Salem also recorded his dealings with the government. A newspaper article revealed the existence of the tapes, and the Reuters news agency received written transcripts. A copy of one of the most revealing conversations between Ahmad Salem and an FBI agent named John was recently acquired by WBAI. In that conversation, Salem demands more money from the FBI, outlining his contributions to the agency, including a cryptic statement by Salem to the FBI. Salem says, we know the bombs start to be built by your confidential informant. According to a source close to the case, Ahmad Salem checked into a Manhattan hospital three hours after the blast, complaining of a severe ringing in his ears. A hospital spokesperson refuses to confirm or deny the report. Salem also mentions a defendant convicted in the World Trade Center bombing, Mohammed Abulima, a man Salem says he located in Egypt for the FBI. The first voice is Ahmad Salem, the second FBI agent, John. The Abu Halima will be killed and hidden and gone forever, and you will never know about him that he ever went to Egypt. Mm -hmm. Will be off the record. And then you have the greatest suspect is gone yeah. and lost forever and you will keep looking for him for the rest of your life. See how much that will cost you. But because you get aware that he's there and you requested him, Egypt stopped it immediately. Now, even the last three weeks is going to be a nice payment. I'm just telling you for the future and what the, the expenses, they just don't want to buy in on $500 a week expenses. That's all. We're all just right. going to have to give me the... Uh, you know, some of the expenses, and they'll pay what, what operationally they are allowed to pay. Let me think about it. Don't think it. There's nothing to think about. Of course I have to think about it. I mean, I have... And then later on, there's, there's, there's bonuses do. and things of that nature. I'm just... The only thing I'm telling you different than from before is that it's not a salary. Yeah. That's the only thing I'm telling you that that is different than what we were doing anyway. Yeah. Okay? And okay, let's him to go recruit Ahmad Abdu. Or let him to go uh, gonna, to talk to Ahmad Abdel Sattar. Ahmad Sattar is a good subject. He can really give you a big help. Yeah. Let him really to give you a big help. I am he doesn't understand everything. Like well, he have to understand. He is the boss. We all running our heads around this boss. So he gotta understand this point. But uh, basically, nothing has changed. I'm well, just telling you yeah. for my own sake. Yeah. That nothing that this isn't a salary, that it's, you know, but you got paid regularly for, for good information. I mean, the expenses were a little bit out of the ordinary and it was really questioned. Don't tell Nancy I told you this. What well, I have to tell her, of course. Well, then if you have to, you have to. Yeah, because, I mean, the lady was being honest and I was being honest and everything was submitted with a receipt. Yeah. Right. And now it's questionable. It's not questionable. It's like a little out of ordinary. Okay. You know. All right. I don't think it was. If that's what you think, guys, fine. But I don't think that because we was start already building the bomb, which is went off in the World Trade Center. It was built by uh, uh, supervising uh, supervision from the bureau and the GA, and we was all informed about it, and we know that the bomb start to be built. By who? By your confidential informant. What a wonderful, great case. Well. And then he put his head in the sand and said, oh, no, 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 that's not true. He is son of a bitch. Okay. Well. It's built with a different way in another place, and that's it. Well, don't make any rest. You know, I'm just trying to be as honest with you as I can. Of course, I and, appreciate that. And as far as the, uh, you know, the payments go and everything like that, they're there. I guarantee you that, that they are there. I'm just saying... They are there. They have to be documented. Mm -hmm. They don't. I want to say they don't pay a salary. All right, just think about it that way. Okay. I have to document every time I put in a week call a blue slip to request funds for your services. Attached to the blue slip has to be documentation as to what you've done. Period. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And 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 the circles that you're running around in, that stuff is never going to go dry. However, 
I would like to see you just continue going on making a living as you are. Because in the future, you're going to have to, or maybe want to slow down. I mean, Sitar does it. I don't know, you know, the whole cast of cast with NASA, all those people, they all work, the engineers working here, working there. It would be better for you. Yeah. Okay, I know you're doing a great job building your credibility, but in a month or so, you have to tell them, hey, guys, you know, I've got bills to pay. If you, I'm going to be available in the evenings or the weekends. Now you still get the same kind of money, but you're still making your other money working, working there. Mm. Yeah, does that make sense? Am I making sense at all? No. <laughs> no. No, I mean, I, no, I'm being honest, too. <laughs> I'm being honest, too. I know you, you, you want to be very aggressive. You want to go in there, you know, full force. I complain. am going full force. I am working from the bottom of my heart. Nobody requested me to work till midnight. I leave at 9 o'clock in the morning. I come back midnight, go to sleep, and get, get up next morning to and get exposed to people who's trying to, like, an hour today with this reporter trying to just grab something out of my teeth, and I got a thing that would be anti the bureau, it gotta be with a certain level, it shouldn't be very high, it shouldn't be, and I gotta cover up my back with the people, they gotta be happy about what I'm saying, you know, like I have two reporters coming in their way now. Mm. I gotta speak to them, anti the bureau, and be extremely damn careful, so one day uh, when I get questions about that, I should be, you know, leveled. So it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a hard game to make Ahmed Absatar happy, and to make Dr. Rahman happy, and oh, to make the reporters happy. I feel just like you do right now. I want to make everybody happy. I know, happy. and to make Mr. John happy. What's his last name? Who? John oh, what? Kraut Hamill. Grand? Kraut Hamill, German last name. Kraut Hamill. Grant Hamill. Yeah. Okay, whatever. <laughs> but, yeah. look, besides all this bureaucratic bullshit, yeah. oh, we're going to yeah. still do a good job. Yeah. Okay? And, okay. you know, don't worry. All okay? Right. Okay. Uh, don't, you've, look, you've gone too far. It's too, too good That's what job. happened the first time. The first time I went so far, so quickly, I took the man to Detroit, I started taking care of things. And we were surprised, and you get to wonder how come this guy going that far that quickly. And that makes him, you know, like, oh, no, no that's not good. <laughs> okay. This guy is a professional guy. This guy is doing things he learned to do with. So let him to work. Yeah. Let him to work. And like I'm telling you, John, one thing you can always say is I'm at Salem falsified any information to the Bureau. Be honest with me. Say yes or no. I'm sorry, say again. Did I ever feel, you, uh, you ever feel, uh, uh, verified information and you find me falsified any information to the Bureau? Falsified? No. Right? No. No. All right. So every single information I supplied it, it's very excellent and correct. I was talking to Sayyid Nusair's wife yesterday yeah. and she's going to visit, to visit him today and uh, I will be going to visit him next week okay. as per the arrangement. What am I supposed to do this trip? I don't have money to do this trip from the very beginning. And then to go over there and the guy will ask me to build a bomb again or to kidnap a judge again or to get in touch of so and so to help me do so and so. Wh who will do that? Who else will do that? Nobody. Yeah, nobody right. could do that. Okay. You know, we waste yeah, look, time. We waste time. Let me tell you something. Yes. Uh, we're talking about like this, this money over here. Well, when you come up with big things like, you know, we got, like, you know, a few of them already. You know, the uh, the fact that we got a head start on Abu Hulim's brother and the fact that, uh, I don't even know. One anything. second, one of the reporters arrived, I guess. All right, look. One second. You, right. Hello? Hello? Yes? No, it's me. Okay. I'll be right down. Thank you. Okay, bye. Is that one of them? No, that's delivery. Oh. But, uh... The only thing that's changed is I told you how the payment system works. Okay. That's all. Mm -hmm. And just keep going. And like I'm saying, I when you have good information, that's a real bonus that leads to other information. Cause Who will evaluate this is a good information, real bonus or not? Who will evaluate that? Who evaluates that? Yeah. Who will say that this is a valuable information, and who will say, okay, we have this phone number already, so what's the big deal? We know that he has a fax, so nothing, nothing big deal. So what? The man has a fax. 
But when you know that this guy has a communication all over the world over these facts and the Bureau doesn't know about it, I think it's a very valuable information. Yeah. Well, well yeah, well, we'll see. Okay. Uh, but, like I said, there's a lot of good information in a short three weeks that has come... Well, you've come right back to where you were six months ago, seven months ago. I guess more. More and more. Yeah, and, uh, and now uh, he's coming again to mess it up. And once... I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm stubborn, too, because I get tired of that. If I withdraw myself again, uh, uh, forget it, to gain or to earn this kind of trust from these people anymore. It's going no, no, to be... No, no, don't, don't withdraw. Don't I withdraw. hear you. I mean, uh, how could I... I was planning to grab my car and jump to Brooklyn tonight. I'm not going. Because, of course, I didn't go to the court today. Muhammad Ibril Gabroni and Ail Gabroni and Muhammad Abu Halima, three of them was waiting for me over but there. But do these people work at all? No, they are not. But you have to explain them, too, that you can't go to every single thing. I mean, you know, I know you didn't... If I didn't go to every single thing, I'm not going to bring information. Plain and simple. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, you're right, but, uh, okay. you know... So even they don't want me around, I gotta try to find an excuse to put myself there. In this meeting, in this meeting, in this... When they having dinner, I gotta go squish my nose between them trying to make myself, like, hungry. And I'm not. To listen what's going on. That's why when I heard Muhammad Abu Halima say that he went with his brother and Muhammad Salama, and there is some kind of whispering in their ears from Sayyid Nasir. How valuable this information to you? It's good. It's good. It's good it is good and it's very important. And will let us to go back on the paperwork and see these people went together and then give that to the district attorney who can say these people went so and so and so. And we have reports that they was talking to this guy, three of them. What is the link between three of them? And you know things? It's a lot of things too. To Everything's the same. I'm just telling you, the only thing I told you was regarding the payments. I mean, what, what difference does it make what I told you half an hour ago or what you were expecting two hours ago? That's all. Yeah. I mean, I'm just telling you what has been related to me. Okay, Ajahn, I really feel sorry for you. I mean, I swear to God, because I really like you very much and I have a great respect for you. I feel so sorry for you for what you tried I mean, I to do. I feel sorry for me too. <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, and really. I mean, I, I am, I am. Uh... I know that. Uh, therefore, uh, go back to work and, you know, don't be mad at me. I'm not mad, and, I'm not mad uh, at, believe me, I'm very frustrated and, and very, I can't, I mean... And uh, I will just try to cool myself down until this guy is coming within in, in any minutes now. Yeah. I gotta but, be ready to speak to him. Yeah, but just, look, there's gonna be a payment coming. So, oh, look, like, for example, here's the first paragraph, right? Yes. So-and-so went to New York District Court, went with Mohammed al Gabroni, and then returned to Abu Bakr Mosque in Brooklyn, where he met with Ahmed Sattar and Mohammed Hassan, telephone number so-and-so. Hassan is identical to Mohammed Hassan Abdul, oh, yes. which is well known to the New York office and the close associates of Sayyid Nasser and Rahman at the Mosque Sattar, Gabroni, Mohammed Hassan, and so-and-so went to the basement. They talk, you know, I'm going to talk about what they talked about, and, and it's about the Abu Halima, and it just goes on and on and on and on and on, and I'm going to ask, you know, for, for good money. One of these things in, 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 a, in a month payment should, should justify that kind, you know, the kind of money you're talking about. Yeah. I'm just telling you that that's the way it has to be for the payments. That's all. Yeah. It's, it's, instead of saying, don't worry about it and still do it anyway. Just, that's all I was told, you know, to tell you. Okay. That's all. It's all the same. Yeah. I just can't guarantee you everything on the expenses side that they're going to be a little picky on that. That's all. Okay. So, you know, I mean, so you want the five hundred, you know, you need five hundred dollars a week right now to do what you're doing, and we'll pick up, you know, your operational expenses. That's it. They're going to be. I'm telling you right now, they're going to be a little stingy on things that they feel a normal person would be spending out of his own pocket anyway. Yeah. That that's their that's their feeling, and that's all. Okay. So, I don't know how else to, how else to say. I want you to keep doing what you're doing. Not only forget about one supervisor or one ASAC or whatever. We're doing this for a higher reason. We know what we're doing, and we know what it's going to mean in the future. Should forget we? about bureaucrats. Forget about them. They come and go. Okay? Okay. We know what we're doing, and at the end, we're going to be, at least be able to look at each other and say, we tried the best we could, you know, not for the government. The government is a very, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Unidentifiable thing. You know, it's a, 
it's not, it's one, sometimes it's one person affecting you, sometimes it's some bureaucratic oh. things, but we'll still know what we did. Yeah. And you're still going to, I'm not going to leave you out in the cold regarding funding and payments, and if you, you know, and that's what I'm going to say. Yeah. Okay? Okay. I'll talk to you in the morning? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay.